So a common trend you see in the game dev space is seeing people remake old classics such as Pac-Man or Pong, but we don't do that over here. What I did was remake Pong five times in five hours with each version having its own twist on the game. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what happened, how I did it, and the end result of all five games. So pull your Atari out from the depths of your loft, sit back and enjoy the video. Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. By the way, I now have a Patreon which gives you access to full Unity projects directly from these videos, as well as tutorial scripts and other cool jazz. If you want to support me, I'd appreciate it. Link in the description. So if, for whatever reason, you don't know what Pong is, which by the way, should be criminal if you don't. Well, I mean, you'd have to be living under a rock not to know. It's essentially a very simple game which emulated table tennis. A ball is sent across the scene and bounces between two paddles, as you can see. Now, this game has officially been out long enough that I think it's time I pay some homage to it. So the first version I wanted to make was exactly that. Now this was simple enough. So we drag in our ball Don't laugh. in between two paddles and we create a very simple script that moves one of them up and down. That is for our player. Paddle number two will be our unbeatable AI as it will track our ball's position on the Y axis and match it exactly. So now we have two paddles being controlled by absolute machines, if you know what I mean. You're not funny. After some more tweaks and some code to make the ball bounce between them, trust me, tweaks were definitely necessary, we ended up having a game that was something similar to the original. So that right there my friends is version 1 complete, the original. So here's where things start to get interesting. We could start actually getting creative with the other versions. So yes, version one may be a little bit too simple for me. Granted, it did drop a mighty 50 years ago. So, you know, I'll cut it some slack, but it's bland nonetheless, all right? So let's get rid of these boring ass paddles and throw in some boomerangs, apparently. Yeah, th this wasn't quite the shape I had in mind. What I was attempting was a nice round circular shape, but here, here we are. Well, I took a longer, more Photoshop orientated approach but we got there in the end. So essentially what I wanted to go for here was a one player pong where you essentially ping the ball against yourself and the paddle is on a circular axis circling round a point and you have to keep the ball inside that little radius. Now using transform.rotate did the trick for this and soon enough I had a really great polished working game. Don't be silly, you're on the Blakey channel here. Th things do not go to plan on the first time, rarely ever. But one thing I can say is we always fix it. So soon enough, we got the result we was looking for and our paddle could rotate around an axis. Now we just had to get some new code for our ball. So this essentially works by creating a direction directly opposite the wall as it comes in contact with the ball. We then push the ball in that direction and then we add a second force that is randomized, meaning it could slightly go either left or right from its current direction. This extra force prevents the ball just going back and forth in a straight line without any randomness of direction. So we had officially made a spin-off from the original Pong game. All we had to do was that uh, another three times, basically. So our version three was sort of like the opposite of the original. I wanted to create a game where the player has to actively try and avoid the ball colliding with the paddle, with the AI doing the same. So we could use pretty much the same system behind our original with just a few tweaks, such as creating a paddle that has gaps in it for both sides, ensuring that the AI's center point is in fact a hole, so it can match the ball's position and always avoid it. And finally, as we no longer have a system in which the ball bounces between paddles, I decided to change this to the ball teleporting behind the AI paddle as it passes through ours. This is actually harder than it looks, but luckily a pro gamer like me had no issues matching our unbeatable AI here, obviously. But from here, we officially had our version three. Yes, it's not exactly Pong as we aren't trying to hit the ball, but that's the fun in itself. So let's, let me have it, all right? Now, version number four is one of my favorites as it's what I like to call the realistic one. Now, why you ask? Well, because gravity is involved. Yes, our ball requires a bounce this time around. So I added in a platform, added some bouncy materials, added a script to randomize the initial angle and enabled gravity and all of a sudden, we have, <sighs> don't ask. All of a sudden we had ourselves Pong, but with gravity. Granted, very bouncy right now, maybe too much, but that'll be fixed. But I do think we've let ourselves off too lightly with this. It needs to be harder, both for me to make and for the player to play. So I added in some colliders in the middle of the scene and these colliders have a 25% chance to flip the gravity. So the ball would start to be dragged into the sky midway through its course. Now that may answer why I added the colliders, but it doesn't answer why I have multiple. 
Well, this adds a small chance that our ball will start off with normal gravity and then get flipped upside down and then get flipped back up again about half a second after, really throwing people off. Now, the exact chance of this happening is calculated. Yeah, I'm not figuring that out. That is not my problem. We got the result and that is what matters. Do not question me. I'm not doing that. But yeah, this is definitely one of the harder versions I made purely due to its unpredictability and there's very little room for error. <coughs> but either way, that is now four versions of Pong made so all we have left is the final version. Now, the final version I wanted to just be pure chaos. So, what's the easiest way for me to create more chaos? Well, more paddles. So we slotted in two more AI controlled paddles that will basically shorten the dimensions of the game into a small box. I altered our paddle AI script to check whether the current paddle is a horizontal one or not and change what axes it follows the ball on in response to this. So if it's horizontal, it'll only move left or right and the opposite for our vertical. Evidently, I did let our code get a little messy as my paddle was insanely stronger than the AI's. Although, I guess... Currently, all we had was normal Pong, technically, but in a smaller area and a little harder to visualize the bounds. So in an attempt to make it a little harder and provide some more originality, I did some randomized direction to our horizontal paddles to match with our vertical one. So now the ball's collision responses are unpredictable, truly giving the AI some power if they want to match with me. You're smarter than me. <laughs> I made some slight changes to the player's paddle to help with differentiation. And now we officially had our fifth and final version of Pong all made within five hours. He's a genius. And you know, because we can, I added some extra flair to the ball in each version just to make it look that bit better. Because I've got to make sure things are good over here for you guys watching. I used the trial renderer component to do this, and as you can see, it turned out pretty well. I mean, well enough. We have the original Pong, our circular Pong, our avoiding Pong, our gravity Pong, and our chaos Pong. I'm very tired of saying that word. But what I'm not tired of saying is thank you all for watching today's video. Like I said, if you want to support the videos and see more in the future, I'd appreciate you checking out my Patreon. Otherwise, just a subscription to the channel or a like and comment. Do it. If you have a video suggestion, make sure to drop it in the comments. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial you want to see, I have a form down below in the description you can fill out because I'm getting organized for you these days. But anyway, guys, I'll thank you all very much for watching today's video. I hope it was a good one. I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Bye.